For a columnist like Peggy, tips and leads are like oxygen for the rest of us. It's what keeps us alive. But even so, not everything makes it into print. Sometimes you have to hold your breath. Episode 6 of Peggy Delaney. A story called Casablanca. Starring Kyra Harper as Peggy. Hello there. You've reached Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune. If you have something confidential you want to pass on, just leave your name and number. The walls have ears. I'll get back to you. If you're calling to give me fulsome, unqualified praise for my columns, please feel free. If you're calling to scream at me, fascist, communist, cop-loving, cop-hating, pro-lesbian, anti-lesbian, crypto basic swamp pig, go for it. After all, this is a quasi-democracy. Yes. Hello. I understand that you're a very close friend of Nick Bauer. So am I. Or was. Could I talk to you about him? Just... Uh, please don't tell him I called. I can assure you that this is all in his very best interest. In case you're wondering. I'm staying at the King Edward Hotel, room 623. Janet Bishop. Would you call me? So that we can arrange a time to meet. Please? Why... It's Ms. Delaney. You're greeting the morning earlier than usual, aren't you? Am I? So how's Nick? Nick's fine. Anything in the paper? Mm, same old, same old. Do you know uh, Janet Bishop? Janet Bishop. Janet Bishop? No. Why? I just thought you might, that's all. Why? No reason. Then why'd you ask me? Oh, just a contact someone mentioned. It doesn't matter. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, that's all right. I was born curious. And that's why you're a newspaper woman. <laughs> Let me take your coat. Newspaper man. I prefer newspaper man. One of my little idiosyncrasies. I would have thought newspaper person. I just as soon jump out that window. Oh. Well, don't. <laughs> Sit down, please. Is this a smoking room? No. Could it be? Oh, I suppose. I'll... Get a glass. So, I mentioned your name to Nick. Did you? I thought I asked you to be discreet. Here you are. Thanks. He's a friend. He didn't know a Janet Bishop. No, of course not. You knew I'd talk to him first. Well, it was a possibility. Now I can see it was more than a possibility. Hmm, well, I'm really curious now. So, who are you? And what do you want with my Nick? As I said, nothing bad. Well, that's not true. It may be upsetting. I'm... My name's Barbara West. Are you sure? Yes. And if I said Barbara West to Nick? Well, that's the problem. I don't know. That's why I wanted to talk to you first... Maybe he would have thrown a chair against a wall. Maybe he would have just laughed. Maybe he'd have gotten plastered again. So, you knew him back in his drinking days? Oh, yes. Over 20 years ago. <sighs> 20 years. Maybe I'm flattering myself. Maybe he wouldn't even remember me. What do you think? I think he'd remember you. I think you'd knock his socks off. What's Nick told you about his days in Paris? Not a lot. I've often wondered why. Foreign correspondent for the New York Times, then headed up UPI's bureau there. He was flying high, a major player with a great career in front of him. Then he ran into some trouble with the U.S. ambassador. UPI gives him the sack, starts to drink, and so on and so on. I'm not here to talk about Nick to a stranger. I thought that's what you wanted to do. Trouble with the U.S. ambassador. Ah, oh, interesting way of putting it. But it's not true. It wasn't the ambassador he had trouble with. It was the ambassador's wife. It was me. No kidding. <laughs> Good old Nick. Yes, well, I'm glad it amuses you. 
It was 20 years ago. Yes. I was going to leave my husband for Nick Bauer and abandon three children. Oh, I, I would have seen my kids once in a while, but knowing what my husband's capable of, I wouldn't have seen them a lot. I was that much in love. And Nick was a fool for love. <laughs> Is that a song or title of something? He was a fool for love. He would have taken on the whole world. We had it all planned. When I'd leave, where we'd live, how I'd try to get my kids back. He already had a job offer back in the States. We even had an apartment picked out in Washington. The night it was all supposed to happen, we met at his place, our hideout. I said no. No explanation. I just said no. No. Then I turned and ran. Jumped into a cab I'd left waiting. He tried to see me for days. I wouldn't talk to him. I wouldn't see him. And then he went crazy. So, that's what happened. Is that ever romantic? Romantic? I think it's deranged. Want some popcorn? I thought you were making it for me. Did you? What gave you that idea? <laughs> hmm. You can have some. So, why did she say no? She said when it came down to it, she couldn't risk the loss of her daughters. Oh. Hmm. Then why didn't she just tell them that? I don't know. So, what are you supposed to do now? Well, now that she knows Nick's been on the wagon for years, that he's well, okay emotionally... I'm supposed to break it to him that the love of his life is in town and would like to see him. Mm. Sammy, get out of it. Get down. The salt's not good for him. It's not the salt he's after. It's the butter. Bite <laughs> off. Be careful. You'll hurt him. How can you hurt him? He's a cat, isn't he? God. Okay. Sorry, Sammy. Maybe if you drank a little less, it wouldn't be so rough with the cat. What? You'd know what you were doing. I know what I'm doing. Don't talk to me like that, Amber. It's okay. I'm used to it. Mm. So are you going to arrange a meeting? What do you... What do you mean, used to it? I mean, you start out sober and you end up buzzed. Every day. Fifteen, not five. It's okay. Mm. So anyway, I think you should arrange a meeting. I really do. And probably they've both been unhappy for years. And look how old they are. <laughs> this may be their last chance to even, uh... Mom? Well, what's the matter? Nothing. I'm just, uh... I'm gonna have a bath. Oh, God. Cinderella cleaning, where everything comes out snow white. What? What? Oh, it's you. That doesn't make any sense, Bernie. I'm sure it does. It's kind of a, a Walt Disney thing. But you don't want everything to come out white. You want it to come out whatever the original color was, don't you? <sighs> what are you calling me for? Uh, well, I don't know. I see. Well, maybe when you know, you could call back. Just... Something happened last night. Nothing much. It's stupid, but it got to me, you know? Uh-huh. Amber, uh, Amber said, more or less, called me a drunk. Uh-huh. It was so matter-of-fact, like she's always known and I always will be. Like it's just a fact of her life. Uh-huh. Bernie, don't keep saying uh-huh. Okay. So I... I just feel so naked, you know. I don't know who I thought I was kidding all these years. Well, certainly not Amber, as it turns out. So I... I feel that I'm on thin ice today, you know. You want to come over here? I feel like I could drink forever. Do you know what I mean, Bernie? Just hold up somewhere today and... Where are you now? Why don't I come over there? I just needed to tell you, all right? 
It helps to tell. I feel better already. I'm glad Amber spoke up. She needs to speak up. That's just reality, sweetheart. Uh Uh-huh. I don't see why I can't stay with you today. Because I have to go over to Nick Bowers with Amber. Surprise? You could knock me over with a feather. I bet this is Amber. Yeah, hi. Amber, Nick Bauer. Well, come on in. Come in. <laughs> Thanks. I've been telling your mother I wanted to meet you, and I wanted to meet you too. Oh, well, good. Good. Yeah, she's been stalling. I'm afraid I might tell some tales on her or something. Here. Let me turn this off. So this is your High Park hideout? Haven't been here before, have you? You never asked me. Still haven't. Well, we'll just... I'm kidding. Well, Amber, I'm sure glad to meet you. You're all your mother ever talks about, you know. Now I can see why. Oh, no. <laughs> always right. Yeah, sit down, you two. Let me close off my computer here. Are you two going to sit down? Well, uh, Mom? Yes. Um, I have something to tell you, Nick. It's kind of a blast from the past. What? And, um, I'll just go back outside to go for a walk. It's really sunny and nice, and so I'll, I'll be back in ten minutes. Uh, so I'll be back. What? Okay, Delaney. What's going on? I should have known something was up here, not the just dropped in type. It's just, I got this call from somebody staying at the King Eddie Hotel. Amber thinks this is all very romantic. Like Casablanca. Well, actually, she's never seen Casablanca. I think it's like that. Would you just. Okay. Well, I'm not even sure I should be doing this. Why doesn't she have the guts to just look you up? But Amber thinks I should help, so I'm helping. How long do I have to wait for this help? All right. Barbara West is in town. She wants to see you. We left it that I would... Nick? Are you okay? Barbara West, you say? Uh Uh-huh. She told me... I don't want to know what she told you. She wants you to call her. She said she really needs to see you. Why? I don't know. She wouldn't say. In case you're wondering, she's still beautiful. Yeah? Well, I'm almost 60 years old. I'm falling apart. XM Sonic Theater, Detective Stories. Hi, Nick. Barbara West. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was beginning to think you were going to stand me up. Oh? Well, I'm just not as fast as I used to be either. Took me two days to decide to call you. I guess loitering around outside the hotel for a half hour isn't so bad. No. I was trying to decide whether to kiss you or not when I saw you. Whether I could kiss you. Carried off. I decided not to try. Good evening. Would the gentleman like something to drink? No. The gentleman would like a very strong, regular coffee, though. 
Yes, sir. That's different. Everything's different. You look good. No, I don't. So, 20 years. I think last time I saw you, you slammed a cab door in my face. Last time I saw you, you were drunk as a skunk standing in our yard screaming my name. I've often wondered. Was your husband home that night? No, he was in Washington. Uh Uh-huh. So listen, I've been trying to figure out why you're here, Barbara. You're still angry, aren't you? What? For something 20 years ago? Are you kidding? Your coffee, sir. Great. And are we ready to make our selections? No, we're not. Freshen up your drink, madam. That's probably a very good idea. Thank you. Nick, believe it or not, I'm so sorry for everything. What the hell's that? Just a violinist. Look, if that's why you came up here to say you're sorry, it wasn't worth the trip. It's ancient history. I'd almost forgotten about it, you know. Thought I had. But I won't kid you. When I heard your name, everything came back in a rush. So let's be kind to each other, okay? It's just what happened a long time ago. You don't know what happened. That's because you went incommunicado on me, Barbara. But I could guess when push came to shove, you were afraid you'd lose your girls to your husband. It was a better deal to lose me. That was your best guess? Uh Uh-huh. You were never much of a guesser, Nick. I was pregnant. What? Pregnant. Just relax, Nick. I'm not pregnant now. What do you mean? You were pregnant with my child? Barbara? What do you mean? Well, that was the problem. For God's sake, why didn't you tell me? Shh, Nick. Just stay calm, okay? I have a lot to tell you. Please don't go crazy. Tell me what you have to tell me. Then I'll decide whether I'll go crazy or not. I was as much in love with you as you were with me. Maybe more. Because I had so much more at risk. I was serious about starting a new life with you. Then why didn't you? Because... I didn't know who the father of the baby was. Oh, Jesus. I know I told you Edward didn't think of me sexually anymore, and that was true. He didn't, most of the time. He was too busy with his whores. But I was his wife, I was there, and I couldn't keep avoiding, saying no, he would have suspected. So it happened once or twice. But I was on the pill. And then the doctor said I was pregnant, and I didn't even know by whom, and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't abort a child for having the wrong father, could I, Nick? I couldn't do it. And I couldn't run off with you if it was my husband's child. It would have been ludicrous. So I froze. I just didn't do anything. And then you left for London. You should have told me. I know. Nick, remember how you said one night if we ever wanted to have children of our own, we'd have to think long and hard because your family had a kind of ghost haunting them down through the generations, a type of hemophilia with the Gilbert and Sullivan name, that's how you put it, Vaughn Willebrand's disease, remember? So, when the baby was born... I had him secretly tested right away. He carries that dominant gene. He's your son. Oh, don't do this to me, Barbara. Don't do this to me. Uh, Are you okay? I don't know. His name is Byron. 
I didn't say anything. Not before he was born, not when I did the blood test, not in the intervening 20 years. I lived my life as an ambassador's wife, at least in name. I raised my three daughters and my son, and I said nothing. Nick, he, he was born healthy, but he's a carrier. Do you understand what I'm saying? Probably. But tell me. My son, our son, is going to be married this spring. They want to have children, lots of children, so they say. So I had to tell him. Yes. Because they can't be having children and not be aware of the medical history that their baby might have hemophilia, bump its head, and and maybe die before they were even aware anything was wrong. Could they, Nick? Uh, uh, could they? Why didn't you say what was going on back then? Why didn't you have the guts to say you were pregnant and you didn't know by whom? At least tell the truth and live by the truth, for God's sake. You didn't give anybody an opportunity, your son, your husband, me, to deal with what was true, to find the right way, to respect everybody's right to know in this mess. It's a hell of a mess, Barbara. It's worse than that. Byron's going to tell Edward the truth. He refuses to live a lie all his life, as I've done, he says. But first, because he's so bullheaded and honorable and just so mixed up about all this, he insists on meeting you. He said he would trace you and do it alone or do it with me. He's here in the hotel now. Oh, no. I'm fighting for his love, Nick. I'm afraid he's going to hate me forever. Talk to him. Explain to him. Be on my side. Don't let me down. Explain what? How we loved each other. And how his mother was a moral coward. Preferred the safety of a joke of a marriage and money and official residences and staff to the truth and to me? Why do you think, after 20 years, that you can come here dressed in your designer clothes and your West Palm Beach tan and do this to me? He's not my son. Maybe in blood, but that's all. He's Edward's son for 20 years. I don't have a son. And a drink for the lady. And have we decided... No. No. It's quarter to two, Nick. I know. Aren't you supposed to meet him at two? I said I would. So? If you finally made up your mind to see him, why are you still working? I'm not working. I'm just sitting here. I'm just going to tell him how I feel. About everything. I'm just going to tell him the truth. For a change. You know what's kind of funny? What? I was already an alcoholic back then. Before I'd met her. Oh? She just thought I was one hell of a drinker. Great party guy. <laughs> when she broke it off with me like that, it gave me the excuse I was looking for. I was almost grateful. Do you understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid when he sees me, he'll be disappointed. I'm a beat up old. I'm afraid he'll be ashamed. <laughs> Sad. Sad? Think so? I don't know. Nick says the kid looks just like him when he was 20. Dark and handsome. Well, we'll just have to take his word on that one, won't we? <laughs> Popcorn? Yeah, thanks. And really polite. He kept calling him sir. American kids are like that, though. Well, some of them, anyway. 
Can you imagine all the mixed-up emotions Nick must have been feeling just looking at that kid? If only that woman had told the truth. Mm. His whole life would have been different. So would his sons. It would have changed everything. Mm, I don't know, given the circumstances. What circumstances? Oh, something Nick told me. Bernie called. Oh? Yeah. A couple of days ago, he wanted to know how you were. <laughs> That's weird. I'm fine. No, you're not. Anyway, he told me that you told him what I'd said to you. Oh. That was nice. I'm just... I just feel sorry, that's all. If I've put you through whatever. You don't know? Of course I know. It's not much fun. I'm trying to relate to someone who's half pissed all Look, the time. Do you want a coffee or something? Well, it's the truth. Bernie told me to keep right on your case. <laughs> well, Bernie's wrong. It's not your responsibility. It's mine. It affects me. I know. The thing is... I'm really ashamed that I can't control it, you know. He said not to listen to any excuses. Oh, well, Bernie's a regular little font of wisdom, isn't he? Look, this is not a good conversation for me. I'm going to get that coffee. Want one? You're an alcoholic, Mom. That's all. I've been wanting to say that for a long time. So have I. This has been Casablanca, episode six of our series, Peggy Delaney, by James W. Nickel. In the cast, you heard Kyra Harper as Peggy. Katerina Scarsoni as Amber. J.W. Carroll as Nick. John Stalker as Bernie. And Peggy Mann as Barbara West. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Kimlicka. The recording engineer was Drago Grandich. Sound effects were by Matt Wilcott. The associate producer was Leanne McDonald. Our coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. The program was produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell the executive producer of The Mystery Project. I'm Bob Boving, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments.